Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to another video for our team fight tactics. Now, normally I will start the video on the loading screen. Uh, unfortunately, the recording software actually crashed while the game was loading. And so we just have to pick up here with the minion rounds once I was able to get the recording software working. In this game, this is taken from a normal match. Uh, this is the first game that I've put up for the most recent Team Fight Tactics patch as I'm recording this, patch 11.4, and I'm going to walk through some of the changes that took place in this game, and we're particularly going to focus on kind of how this game ends because there were some useful adaptations that I was able to make in kind of the closing stages of the game, but of course we have to get there first. Off of the initial carousel, I was trying to take uh, one of the more offensive items, but I ended up getting a giant's belt, and then the items that dropped afterwards were another giant's belt, and then a chain vest. So I was able to make a sunfire cape off of that, which I was pretty happy with, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to get more offensive items later on, so just keep that in mind for the future. Now, I had the option to pick up a Duelist Fiora for my initial chosen. I passed that up, then I got a Fortune version of Tom Kench, which is a pretty good early chosen. Good for frontline, and also gives you the opportunity to play Fortune with only one other unit. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to find another Fortune unit, and then be able to get the Fortune trait in play, because it doesn't actually do anything if you just have the Tom Kench. Also, I run into someone who is open fording, this person, Hairless Monk, who has decided to play no units at all and just get 20 gold. I don't think that that's a good strategy, but that's how this person opted to start the game. And I believe that they end up playing some kind of fortune strategy that is based on taking a whole bunch of losses and stacking gold and then trying to figure out their team composition. This game ended up having a pretty solid uh, set of opponents. There's actually two people in Masters, two people in Diamond, a couple people in Platinum amongst the other players here. Uh, it turns out that the person who's open fording Hairless Monk is someone who's in Master and don't know how seriously they're taking the game, but we'll see. Now, one of the things that I was looking to play in this game, one of the compositions that's popped up recently is a team composition that's based around Sivir. And I actually did get an early Sivir here. The logic behind playing Sivir is that she's a strong mid-game carry, particularly if you can two-star her early on. And she plays into then Samira later. It's kind of the way that Sharpshooters is played in this patch. Previously, sharpshooters tended to be based around Nidalee, but Nidalee ended up getting nerfed pretty pretty, uh, pretty hard in this patch. And no one can say it wasn't deserved because a three-star Nidalee was like one of the strongest units in the previous patch, kind of straight to a ridiculous degree that was not really deserved. So building team comps around Nidalee, not really something that's happening in this patch. People have kind of moved around to Sivir. So I was thinking, you know, if I can get some of Sivir's key items, which I believe are a Last Whisper and a Rapid Fire Cannon, makes her really good at shredding armor and also getting extra attack speed, then maybe, maybe in that case, I can look to play around Sivir. So we'll have to see how that develops. Right now, I'm just playing Brawler's Frontline, Sharpshooter Backline, nothing too crazy. Here, I had the opportunity, I saw that there was the early Shivana, and I thought, well, you know, Shivana's probably better than playing the Vi. Here, I can sell the Vi, and I'll still be at 10 gold if I can win. Actually, I don't even have to win this round. I can sell the other Tom Kench even if I lose, but I'm hoping I can win because I'd like to carry a win streak through here now that I've won the first two matches. That would be really helpful in terms of getting my economy up and rolling. I actually have quite a few expensive units. I have the Shivana, who's a three cost unit. I have the Sivir, who's a three cost unit. And I have the Teemo, who's a two cost unit. So that's all pretty expensive this early on, but I did get a fair amount of gold from the minion rounds. And by winning those three rounds, I also get the one gold bonus for winning each round. So able to win streak through the initial rounds, that's always puts you off to a good start. It does mean I'm gonna have low carousel priority, but I think still better to win the rounds, preserve the health, and get the extra gold from winning those rounds. All right, so what am I looking for here on this carousel? Well, in terms of itemization, I'd like to get like a recurve bow or a BF sword or a brawler's glove. Any of those things would be helpful in terms of making my carries stronger, who right now are kind of Teemo and the Sivir. But I am picking last, and it looks like all of those things are going to be off the table. There's still the recurve bow, so I'm gonna go for that. Unfortunately, it's on the other side of the carousel, so I'm not gonna be able to get that and then I'll go ahead and take the uh, Negatron Cloak between what's left. Uh, fortunately, it is on a three gold champion in Aurelia, but it's a it's not the item I want because I'm getting all defensive items and it's kind of hard to play around getting this many defensive items. 
Set 4.5 doesn't have something like Dusk where you can kind of play a trait uh, and just win. You can try to play a team composition that's purely defensive items, or at least it's a lot harder. I guess the uh, Fabled team composition can play pretty well with defensive items, but you still need some AP on Nico in that team composition. Well, anyway, right here, I get another Negatron Cloak from the Lantern along with a Reforger, and so I opt to Combine the two cloaks together, make a Dragon's Claw, which is another great defensive item. So I've got really, really good defensive itemization. That Tom Kent is going to be nearly impossible to kill. However, I have no offensive items whatsoever, which is a problem. And the other issue is I still haven't found another fortune unit yet, which is a little bit sad. I did go ahead and opt to drop sharpshooters and put in Dragon Soul instead. I By going to level 5, I go, no, actually, I still have sharpshooters in because I have Tristana. Uh, so with Tristana in there, and then I toss in the brand, I'm able to get the uh, Dragon Soul in by virtue of having the Shivana. So this is this is pretty good for the early game setup right here. We've got the super tanky Tom Kench. We have uh, some backline units. We have some sharpshooters to deal damage. And then in addition to that, we've also have the Dragon Soul damage that can apply to either Shivana or Trist. I guess technically also brand, but let's be fair. Brand is just in there as a trait bot. Brand's not likely to do too much. Still, no fortune unit thus far, and that's really unfortunate. I, I mean, I've won the first four rounds. Can you imagine if I had had like an Annie or a Katarina in here and I'd been able to pick up the fortune gold? I mean, that would be like two to three gold per round extra by this point, assuming, of course, I'd still be winning the rounds, which is not guaranteed. But if I were still winning the rounds, then, uh, you know, I'd have like 10 extra gold at this point by now, which is an awful lot. So here's the last round bef before the minion round. I would certainly like to win this one because then I can carry my win streak through to the minion round, which would be really good. And Shivana gets off that Dragon Soul proc, and Tom Kench is still basically unkillable here at the very beginning of the game. So that's going to be enough, and I do manage to carry that win streak all the way through, which has left me very, very happy. Now I do get another fortune unit finally. I get Darius, which is a unit that I typically don't play. Darius is fortune plus slayer, and he's a, a unit that really only plays into a fortune team composition. Even if you're running, even if you want to run slayer, typically you'd run other slayer units if you're not running fortune. Like, you get more value generally from running stuff like Pike or uh, what are some of the other Slayer units? Like, obviously, Olaf would be your focused unit most of the time in a Slayer carry. Uh, Trindamir in a Warlord's team composition, Samira late, etc. So this is nice. I get a six gold drop in terms of three champions. But uh, I really want some offensive items. And what do I get? Another giant spelt? And I'm like, um, hmm. So, so far, we've gotten three giant spelts. And we've gotten... Uh, two Negatron Cloaks, and one Chain Vest. So th these items, I'm like, what am I going to do here? I mean, they're working for right now, don't get me wrong. Like, there is value to having them right now. I think I've managed to make good use of them so far. But long term, if I have no damage items, it's going to be really hard to put together a team composition that can actually do something in the late game. Like, I can't just get nothing but belts and cloaks and win in the late game. I'm going to need some kind of damage item at some point. So I'm really concerned at this point about the long term setup for my team. Uh, here I decide I'm going to drop Dragon Soul and instead move to Spirit because I just thought that this would be more valuable. So I'm Put the Teemo back in, and then I pick up uh, the Spirit. I have the option to play either Yumi or Kindred for the other Spirit unit, and I wasn't sure which one of them I wanted to play. I figured I'd probably just grab both of them and see if I'm able to two-star anything. Note that I also leveled to six very early, and uh, that was because two reasons. I'm on a win streak. I won the, won the first five matches in a row, so I want to preserve the win streak if possible. And the other reason was that by leveling early, I'm able to get Fortune into the comp. I didn't really want to take any of the other units out to put Darius in. So uh, we get Darius in, and we finally now have Fortune actually doing something. My plan is to play Tom Kench for the rest of Stage 3 and then look to uh, sell him and find another Chosen at the end of Stage 3 because I don't really want to run Fortune long term here. I, I think that Fortune's great for the early game. I think it falls off pretty severely after that. And uh, I don't think that it's going to be that helpful in like Stage 4. So run it for the rest of Stage 3, get to like Level 7, roll for a new Chosen, and then look to find something else from there. Idea is to adapt to what the game is giving me and try to put something together. I am, like I said, I am very concerned about my items though, because long term, I don't think this is going to work. All right, so here we are against another team composition. This one looks like they're playing through uh, sharpshooters or something like that. Now, the one thing is their team is doing a lot of damage and if they can get through the Tom Kench, my team's not so tanky. So I was like, oh, is this, is this finally gonna be it? 
And yes, unfortunately, I do end up losing that round. I think the big pressure there is none of my board was two-starred except for the Tom Kent's chosen. Every other unit, one star. And that ended up being an issue because that Sharpshooter's Comp just got all the ricochets on their auto attacks and uh, eventually tore through my front line. My uh, comp is very strong from front to back team fight right now because it's so hard for anyone to kill the Tom Kench, but uh, anyone with backline access can can beat me. Uh, I'm actually pretty lucky that no one's really playing assassins in this lobby. Here I decide that I'll go ahead and play the Yumi for right now, that probably the healing from Yumi is a little bit more useful than another source of damage. I felt like I had enough damage probably between like uh, Sivir and Teemo and like Darius just does damage so having the heals from Yumi I figured were probably a little bit better than the extra damage from the uh, Kindred but of course if I hit two star Kindred then I will of course play that and it doesn't hurt me to hold that unit on my bench right now so I will go ahead and do that Anyway, things still going really well overall in the game in terms of health things just not going so great in terms of uh, in terms of what am I going to do with my items Actually, Darius gets off some really good dunks there. I think he got off like two resets in the middle of that fight, so that's quite useful. Still, it doesn't look like I'm going to have enough because the whole rest of my team is dying. Timo gets taken out by the wild cards, but then, aha, Tom Kench has that Dragon's Claw, which means that magic damage just does nothing. <laughs> like, Brand is casting and Tom Kench just takes no damage. So, yeah, he is actually able to finish that fight off. And that was someone who rolled down all of their money at level 6. Like, literally no gold left whatsoever, so they are not in good shape. All right, now as for me, once again, I'm going to have last pick on the carousel, so that's not surprising. In terms of what I want, once again, I'm just looking to get more offensive items. A BF sword could give me a Zeke's here, make good use of one of those giant belts. Um, a recurve bow would be useful, though the bows are already gone off this carousel. The glove wouldn't be nice too, although the glove on a kale, it's kind of shocking it lasted that long. So now it gets back to me and it's like, oh, we've got belt or <laughs> cloak. Again, <laughs> another belt or another cloak. I was like, all right, this is, yeah, this is not going to work. So I'm thinking at this point, I should, maybe I should use that reforger to try to get something else because this really is not what I'm looking for. Uh, I get the mini fortune cash out, lost one round, won one around for fortune. And that gives me six additional gold, which is quite nice, really. Always nice to get, uh, you know, if you're going to lose a round, you might as well get the fortune afterwards. So, I'm very close to level, uh, very close to level seven here. I was like, all right, well, uh, it only costs what, like, uh, five, what was it? It was eight extra gold to level to seven. So I'll level to seven and instead of Kindred or Yumi, it's like, well, well, let's just play both of them. Why not? So I'll go ahead and play both and look to go from there. I would much prefer to have like another unit in for Mystic or to put in, I don't know, something else that, what do I need right now? Uh, st still don't really need Frontline because Tom Kench is so tanky. But uh, what I really, I guess what I really want is just to two-star more of my units. I still only have one two-star unit, which is the chosen Tom Kench. But he is very tanky. And let's see, can he manage to finish off this Nico here? That Nico's got a Guardian Angel and a Jeweled Gauntlet. But once again, Tom Kench does not really care about magic damage. And he just manages to sneak that out. So I'm going to win that one. And now if I can win one more round, I can try to keep this win streak going into the minion rounds. And then here I get a Darius out of the fortune uh, payout. And then there's another Darius just sitting there on the bench. Would I have remembered to pick that up uh, without the fortune payout? I'm not sure. And here I'm going to reforge items and I actually get stuff that's not that bad. I get a Bloodthirster, which, okay, Bloodthirst is not the greatest item, but I get a bow. So I'll take that. So I'm going to put those items on Sivir. And again, I'm still looking maybe to play through Sivir. I have not seen any other Sivirs. I got one off of the... I think it was in the initial minion rounds on like stage 1-3 or something. And I've seen zero Sivers since then. I have not really seen anything in the way of sharpshooters. So still hoping to play maybe a sharpshooters comp, but I wouldn't say that I've gotten much luck in that regard from the rest of the game here. Again, Tom Kench still tanking, still tanking. Is he going to be able to hold up long enough for us to get in the back lines and kill that Dragon Soul brand? And it looks like he was just barely able to do so. So Tom Kench has been just amazing thus far. And he has really, really, really been helpful. So I could try to stick with this, but it is, I have gotten to stage, what is this stage? Uh, the end of stage three. And I really do want to look to replace Tom Kench with a different Chosen. I, I want to move out of Fortune. I want to move into playing something else. And I'm hoping that if I can find a Chosen, I can start to get some more definition to my team comp. So I'm going to go ahead and make the swap now. And if I'm going to, I'm going to start rolling here. By the way, I get a, uh, 
I get a, a Yasuo at 1%, not Yasuo, uh, Yone at 1% odds. So I'm going to hold on to that. That definitely seems worth picking up. And you might say, well, why are you rolling before the minion round? Why not wait and roll after the minion round? Well, I want a little additional time because I know that I'm not the fastest at rolling. Since I had the money, I'm going to go ahead and do so right now. Uh, I also picked up a spatula, which is pretty interesting. So I can make a uh, make something with that. And I go ahead and make the duelist spat, which I think would be really useful. So going to make the duelist trait on Sivir. I was like, oh, cool, that could be pretty useful. But I'm going to keep rolling here. I still haven't found a chosen I really like yet. Uh, I was tempted by picking up the Mystic Janna. I could potentially get run 4 Mystic here, but I think I'm going to pass on that for right now. I'm still looking to replace something, going to drop the Shivana. I want to get Yone into the team comp somehow, and I need to put these defensive items that were on Tom Kench on someone, so I'm going to put them on Yone. He's not the greatest user of them, but he's not bad, certainly. It's not like I have any vanguards or brawlers in there right now to take those units, so we'll put it on Yone and he can just frontline for the moment. Uh, I have definitely made my cop weaker overall for right now, so I'm not really expecting to win these fights, but uh, I just need more time to roll a bit more to try to find something. That said, the Bloodthirster is doing a lot of work on the Sivir, but sooner or later, Darius is going to get his dunk off, and that's that. So, puts an end to that. As I said, I expect to lose some of these rounds because I'm in the process of transitioning to a different team composition. Again, still looking to find maybe more sharpshooters for a source of damage. I do want to get Darius out of the comp at some point, too, but for right now, I'll hold him in the team comp because I don't really have a unit to replace him with. Yeah, I mean, some decent Chosens here, some playable Chosens, but then, oh, well, there we go. So find a Kale. <laughs> I find the Kale at 5% uh, odds. So when you're at level 7, you can get either, I believe you can get two, uh, three cost or four cost or two cost Chosens. The... Um, the four cost chosens have very low odds. It's only 5% odds that you're going to get a four cost chosen. But uh, I suck out here. I get insanely lucky and I find the Kale chosen at level seven. So I instantly get a two star Kale. And I actually have pretty good Kale items. I have the, uh, I have the Duelist Spat, which is amazing for Kale. And then I also have, uh, I can make a Rage Blade for another item. And then I'd love to get another defensive item in that last slot. But we'll have to wait and see what we get because, again, I'm going to have low carousel priority. So that that resolves that. We're playing a Kale game here. And I can't really make use of this Bloodthirster, but whatever. So um, I'll have to find, try to find someone else to put that on. And I'm going to be trying to switch up my team comp, and we're going to go into a Kale composition here. So again, this is just me adapting to what I found in the game. I make two-star Teemo and immediately sell two-star Teemo because I don't, I'm not playing Sharpshooter. I don't need him. And here I go ahead and sell the uh, Darius because we're not playing Fortune. And this is not a team composition that goes into Slayers. So uh, I have weakened my board in some ways. I did sell some two-star units, but I've managed to upgrade to some other two-star units. Uh, now I need to look to get a little bit more frontline. Definitely could use that, but um, I managed to make three Adept this early, which is really quite good. Three Adept is very nice. It's going to slow the attack speed of the other um, enemy teams for, I think it's uh, I think it's three and a half seconds at the start of each fight, which is really nice. But I mean, it's kind of a little bit silly having the Shen plus the Yone plus the Aurelia here at uh, you know the middle of stage four. So the 1% the odds on the Yone was super lucky, and then even luckier getting the Kale. It's slightly unfortunate that it's a Divine Kale. I would prefer to have the Executioner version of Kale, but like beggars can't be choosers. You gotta take what's available, and that was certainly uh, <laughs> that was certainly a lucky find there. So it just resolved you know my problem of, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what my team comp is gonna be. It resolved that really easily. So here we go, we have yet another um, carousel here, and in terms of looking for what's available, I would uh, my, the ideal choice would be a defensive item in that last slot for Kale, but it seems really unlikely I'm going to be able to get like a Quicksilver Sash uh, here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, I'm going to take the Brawler's Glove, and I'm going to use the tier on my bench to make a, a Hand of Justice, which is a useful item on Kale. If she rolls the extra damage, it's gonna be very strong. It will cause her to cast a little bit sooner. Now, maybe it would have been better to wait and see if I could make a Quicksilver Sash, but remember, there's only one minion round left that's gonna drop components. After the stage four, um, after the end of stage four, everything's gonna be completed items, not components. And I wanted to make use of the items that I had because I didn't really see a good way to make use of that tier otherwise. So Kale's gonna be vulnerable. She does not have a defensive item. I really would like a Quicksilver Sash or a Guardian Angel on her. So I'm gonna have to try to keep her safe with positioning in these fights. 
if I can't keep her safe, then I'm probably going to lose these because she is the entirety of my damage. No one else does any damage at all. But we've got a lot of traits in play. We've got, as mentioned, the three adept. I also have mystic in play, executioner spirit, and duelist. By the way, that's the only reason Trindamir is in this comp. Trindamir is just in there to activate duelist. I would much prefer to have uh, Jax or Lee Sin, but I haven't found them thus far. So in the absence of them, I will go ahead and play the Trindamir because he will activate the duelist trait for Kale, and it would be silly to have not have any duelist in at all. Uh, so attack speed's not going to be the issue on Kale. She's going to have tons and tons of attack speed between Duelist Trait and the Rage Blade. If anything, she may have too much attack speed between the two of them. So I don't really need to worry about itemizing that. It would be useful if I could get more Divine, which will give her um, more survivability just via the Divine trait. And also it would be useful to... Uh, what was it? Uh, to get other traits that help Kale as well. So like, um, I have the Mystic trait in, which is helpful. There is always the opportunity to play into Siphoner later on, which will give her some additional um, healing off of her ultimates once activated. So we'll have to go from there. As far as the other team compositions, I'm just looking here. I'm trying to position Kale in a spot that's going to make her safe. Uh, in looking at the other team comps, it looks like being on the left-hand side is going to be safer than being on the right-hand side. So that's what we're going to do. There were a couple of people playing Aurelian Soul, but they are, all their Aurelian Souls were on the left. Aurelian Soul, when he's on the left, he'll fire his ult to the right. So being on the left as well should make me a bit safer against those team comps. But as you'd expect, I've been win streaking pretty hard since I found the Kale Chosen. This was a pretty big high roll, as mentioned. And I would expect to win streak through stage four once I find the, the Kale uh, two-star uh, chosen. So change is worth mentioning. Oh, here, by the way, I'm just going to toss in this Wukong because he activates four divine. I'm, again, still hoping that Jax will show up. I really want Lee Sin to show up. Lee Sin would make another really nice late game carry. So we'll go for that. And yeah, by activating four divine, you get a little bit more damage reduction and true damage. Divine two doesn't really do a whole lot. You kind of need to get up to divine four to have the trait be meaningful for the most part. All right, as mentioned before, though, we should talk a little bit about some of the changes in this patch. Uh, one of the big changes is, so the big change in the patch, kind of twofold things. Uh, and by the way, oh, I should mention this. Yeah, note the items for a perfect Quicksilver Sash. I was like, oh, really? Could have had Quicksilver Sash for Kale. So in retrospect, probably a mistake. Probably would have been better to hold and wait to make that last item. Because I could have made a Quicksilver Sash for Kale. But the odds of that weren't great. Um... In fact, the odds that really weren't that good because I'd already had so many cloaks. The odds of getting yet another cloak from the last minion round were pretty low. <laughs> Got pretty much nothing but defensive items this entire game. <laughs> anyway, so changes in the patch. Big changes involved nerfing a lot of the one-cost units that had been getting played. As I go ahead and make the Quicksilver Sash on uh, Yone. A lot of the one-cost units that people have been re-rolling for three stars got nerfed in the patch, and deservedly so. The one-cost units were too strong. I pr don't particularly like re-roll metas anyway, so I was glad to see those nerfs come through. People re-rolling for Nidalee three-star, people re-rolling for Nasus three-star, people re-rolling for Diana three-star. Uh, all of those things were ended up getting nerfed in, uh, in this patch. And like I said, they were pretty deserved nerfs, so... Uh, that's all gone in this patch. The other big change is they changed the fundamental odds for Chosens. Previously, the way that Chosens worked was, obviously, if you have a Chosen, you can't get another Chosen, as Yone fails to kill this super tanky fabled Nautilus. Uh, you, of course, you can't get a Chosen if you have a Chosen in right now. Uh, but previously, the way that the Chosen worked was, the odds to find a Chosen were, if you didn't have one in, it was 33%, and then each round that you didn't uh, get a Chosen, the odds would go up by 5%. So if you don't have a Chosen, it's 33%, then 38%, then 43%, etc. Now in this patch, the Chosen odds have gone up substantially. Now it's 50% odds to find a Chosen. And then again, each round you don't find one, it goes up by 5%. So if you don't have one, it's 50%, then 55%, then 60 etc. So you, you find Chosen a lot more frequently, and you can be a bit more picky in terms of getting them. So uh, Chosen are more prominent. They do pop up more often. The trade-off is they did lower the stats that each Chosen gets. Uh, Chosen, in addition to serving as two of one of their traits, uh, Chosen also get bonus stats, and uh, they uh, lowered the uh, bonus stats that they get for being a Chosen. So overall, it's a pretty big shift uh, in ter terms of the math of like how Chosen works. So as I said, you can be a bit pickier, especially if you're in the middle of rolling down. You can be a little bit pickier in terms of what Chosen you end up getting. Uh, so even though the odds were pretty low that I would find the Chosen um, Kale, because again, the four cost Chosen are only 5% odds when you're level 7, it, the odd, it was a bit more likely than in a previous patch. 
Okay, so what am I doing here? I picked up the Zaya because that gives me an option to pick up Executioner 3, which would be handy. Would give me more damage on Kale. And I've also picked up Nasus because Nasus gives me a Siphoner option. I could play Nasus for Divine plus Siphoner, and then I could toss in like Morgana or maybe Swain if I can find Swain in order to get the Siphoner trade in play, which can be nice because then Kale will be healing off of all of her damage. Still, I have a, quite a few one-star champs on my board. Like, there's a lot of units I still need to two-star. My front line in particular could really stand to be stronger. I'm playing the Adept front line here. It sure would be nice if I could two-star like the Shen and the Aurelia, and eventually the Yone would be quite nice to do. But the Adept really helps against a lot of these teams. Like, that was a sharpshooter team I was up against there. And the slowing their attack speed, even if it's just for like the three to four seconds at the start of the fight, uh, does end up helping a lot against a team comp that's so based on auto attacking. So we have lost one player. A couple other people are getting low. I'm lucky that I have a lot of health banked because I was I had the strong early game. And then in the mid game, I sold the Tom Kench and found the Kale, which was, of course, very lucky. So I've had a strong early game and a strong mid game. And now I'm hoping I can put together a strong end game as well. As far as what I want here, I would take the Zeke's out of these items, but Zeke's goes away, so I'll go ahead and take the Redemption instead. This is actually going to make two-star Trindamir, so Trindamir has pretty bizarre itemization between Bloodthirster and Redemption. I wouldn't say these items are particularly good, but I've really been struggling with the items all game because I got so many defensive items, both uh, from the natural minion rounds and then also off of carousels. And then picking with like last carousel priority over and over and over again has left me with a lot of stuff I don't really want. So Kale's itemization is not bad. She has a she she basically does a ton of damage, but she has no survivability. And then we've got some good defensive items on Yone, and then it's like whatever for everything else. So a little bit odd. Now, in terms of the other comps out there, the one that's concerning is the one that you saw me lose to, the one with the three-star Nautilus. That is a Fabled comp, and Fabled uh, definitely got stronger in this patch version. Fabled is, was kind of a niche team composition in some of the earlier patches, but it's definitely one of the stronger options here in this patch. And that's good to see because Fabled as a trait wasn't really doing a whole lot in most of the earlier patches as we're pretty easily kill that other team comp. Again, if people can't get on the Kale, I'm going to win pretty much every round. So um, I'm starting to look at this other team comp with the Fabled units and think, like, what am I going to need to do to overcome this team composition? Because it, I think I'm heading towards a situation where the two of us are the ones that are going to be competing. And here we might as well just replace the mostly useless uh, Wukong with the Jax because that gives me... Uh, Jax is a better frontliner to begin with and also gives me another opportunity for Duelist. I would like to get Duelist 4 in. That would be really nice. You know, get the extra attack speed. It benefits Kale, but it would also benefit the uh, the other duelists in my team. So I guess that I guess at the moment that's just Trindamir, who does do a decent amount of damage, by the way. Now here's a round where I'm going to fail the positioning. This person moved their uh, Aurelian Soul over to the right hand side. And this person also held a Zephyr on their bench. Now I couldn't dodge the Zephyr because this person had the Zephyr on their bench. But like, watch Trindamir in this fight. He's going to serve as the carry for this fight because Kale got um, first Zephyr out of the fight and then removed. And yeah, he's actually doing some decent damage, him and Yone there. But uh, is it going to be enough? No, it's not going to be enough. And like I said, I really couldn't dodge the Zephyr because the person held a Zephyr on their bench and then placed it at the start of the fight. So not really a lot you can do about that. Here's an interesting item, Duelist Spat. I was like, ooh, another Duelist Spat? Okay, <laughs> we'll get yet another Duelist Spat here. So this should make it a lot easier to run full, four Duelists. I could just put this on someone right now. Out of the champions that are on my bench right now, I could opt. I think out of the ones that are here, I would put it on the Kindred. But uh, as I hit level nine, I'm probably going to put the uh, the Zaya in because I don't have another unit to put in right now. And then I can put the Duelist Bat on the on the Zaya potentially. Uh, she's also a better user for like the Bloodthirster that Trindamir has right now. So, all right, so we'll go ahead and go to level 9 here, as we two-star the Aurelia. So I'm going to take out the Trindamir, and, oh, I guess I just sold the Trindamir. Okay, maybe I should have held Trindamir a little bit longer. Oh, well. And I'll go ahead and put the, the Redemption on Shen, because he's going to go in the front lines. He's going to die. And now it's a matter of just rolling and seeing what I hit here at uh, level at level 9. I am going to get more sets here, and I actually pass up the set. But I get the Swain, and I was like, hmm, you know, Swain might be useful to hold on here. I don't think I need the Morgana. So we'll go ahead and put in Swain for the moment. And I was trying to replace Jax with uh, Nasus just so I can activate Siphoner Trade. I do think that that would be handy to have in for these fights because I can maintain the four Divine and also get Siphoner in. But I'm going to keep rolling here because why not? 
and I make a two star zillion and that's going to influence what happens here. I was like, all right, well, if I have a two star zillion, I really should opt to play that. So I am going to look to play the two star zillion here, I think. Uh, over something, or at the very least, hold on to it right now. And I go ahead and sell the set because I figure I'm not going to play set here. I already passed up one. Uh, there is a case to be made for playing set, but he doesn't really fit into this team composition. So we'll keep rolling, and there's a big hit, the two-star Yone. That is definitely going to help out. And then I managed to hit two-star Shen, and there, haha, we finally have the Lee Sin. So we'll definitely put Lee in. And then there's the question of what else do I want to play? So this is looking pretty good. We've got four Divine. There is maybe the possibility to get another Duelist, and I do have the Jax, but I have to think about what to play. Like, I could drop the... Yeah, and so here you see, I can drop the... Um, the Swain, that uh, doesn't keep, doesn't put um, Siphoner in, but it does allow me to get, uh, f what is it, four Divine and four Duelist in with two Mystic and two Spirit, along three Adept, three Executioner. I was like, all right, this feels pretty good. I think that this is, I think that this is the board for me. But then I run into this comp, again, the person running the Fabled comp, and their Aatrox just gets the pull on Kale, and without that, I don't really have a whole lot in my composition. And based on how poorly this fight went, I was like, hmm, I don't think I beat this team composition here. This person is super tanky. Like, there's not really an easy way to kill that Nautilus. The extra damage, I'm not sure that that's actually good for this particular matchup here. So I was starting to think about what can I do to deal with this fabled team composition. I'm concerned about how I win against that comp. Because, like, there's another person on 11 HP. I'm Scuba Steve, <laughs> and I'm not worried about that. That is the Sharpshooter team composition. So instead, I'm going to look to start changing up uh, how this is how this is set up. So I'm going to drop the Spirit here. Do I really need Spirit at this stage in the game? No, I don't think so. So um, we're going to drop the Spirit. I'm going to put in the Zillion, and then I'm going to put in the Nico because that makes four Mystic. Now, four Mystic is not going to be that helpful against this team composition. With this is the um, Sharpshooter team composition. And uh, by the way, definitely should have sold Teemo and moved some of those items over to like the Samira. And yes, I know it's a three-star te uh, Teemo, but still really would have benefited from having some of those items on like the Samira at the end of the game. And as it turns out, the uh, the Fable team comp is going to knock out Scuba Steve here. So here we go. It's going to be an extended late game duel between myself and and the other player, quality drugs. I think I'm just going to refer to them as the fabled player. Now, I do get something super useful. Finally, I get a good item off the carousel. I get the, the shroud. I was like, yes, give me that shroud of stillness. I was lucky that that was on my side of the uh, board and I'm able to pick up that item. Very, very, very good item in these late game scenarios. But we got to start thinking here, what do I need to beat this comp? So like, what is a fabled team composition? Because that's what we're up against here. Well, fabled team comps, don't really have high damage. They're actually pretty low in terms of their damage output. What the Fabled Team Comp does is it's just super duper tanky. And the idea is that they sustain themselves over the course of the fight. That Nautilus is going to be really hard to kill. I believe that person's running uh, four Vanguard and four Mystic or something like that. So the Team Comp is going to be really, really hard to kill. And the fight's going to drag out for a very, very long time. It's just going to take forever. By the way, I was too slow to place the Shroud, so... Not good use of items by me. So what I need to do is I need to find some way to like out sustain this team composition. I just need to be able to survive uh, long enough to kill these units. In particular, that Nautilus. Look, Kale got stuck on the Nautilus, which is really bad because the rest of the team is, you know, the rest of my team is dying while Kale continues to just hit the Nautilus the entire time. And that Nautilus is almost unkillable with the Bramble Vest, which protects against crits and the Dragon's Claw and the Wormog. So I'm going to lose that round. And that doesn't look particularly good. But still, I was like, all right, I think we can, I think we might be able to do this here. So in terms of traits that we need, we need, we definitely need Siphoner because these rounds last so long, I need to get Siphoner in play. And I, by the way, I still have the opportunity to make the two stars I out. I don't know that Executioner is really any good here though. Uh, in terms of other units here, so I put Nasus in along with the Swain to activate Siphoner, and I do manage to hit the two-star Swain, which is really big. That's going to make Swain much, much, much stronger. So here, I'm going to try to get that Shroud into a good position. I'm also going to try to position Kale so she's not hitting the Nautilus. I'm hoping that she will fire her waves in the opposite direction. Uh, also, it would be really nice to kill the Cho, because you notice the Cho keeps knocking up the entire board every few seconds, and then that always interrupts Kale because she has no Quicksilver Sash. 
So um, hoping that this will go a little bit better, but like notice that because Kale has no healing on her um, items, I guess she has the Hand of Justice, but it doesn't always roll life on hit. Uh, she really needs Siphoner. So Siphoner is absolutely critical to have in this fight. And this fight's going a lot better. I mean, we still have the Nautilus. Can we kill that Nautilus? Kale keeps getting knocked up in the air. And unfortunately, Kale's going to get taken out. But can Yone get this done? Yes. All right. So I was like, all right, there we go. Two-star Swain making the difference there. Swain's items are completely ridiculous. He has a Duelist Spat and a and a uh, Shroud of Stillness. And because he survived so long in the fights, I'm going to give him this Giant Slayer too. Because who else can use the Giant Slayer? Again, another example of the items just being bizarre throughout this whole game. So this is kind of weird, right? Like I, I dropped Executioner trait. I don't have that. I've dropped down to, uh, I've dropped down to two duelists. But it's like, do I need duelist here? Well, no, I don't need duelist. Kale already gets absurd attack speed. She's got the Rage Blade. She's gonna max out attack speed regardless. She doesn't need duelist four. It's not gonna do that much. But I do want the Divine four. I think it's important to keep that because it uh, is really useful for keeping her alive. And I need that Siphoner trait. I also really want the 4 Mystic because most of the damage in a Fable team comp is magic damage. So it's really important to have 4 Mystic in. Now the one thing that I did want is I really, really wanted to get Lee Sin into the team comp because Lee Sin's really good against super tanky champs because what can he do? Well, he can kick them off the team. But I didn't see a, what unit I would want to take out. I think that the unit that I could have taken out is Aurelia here. Um, like, I would still maintain Divine 4 even if I take Aurelia out. I was kind of waiting to see if I could 2-star the Lee Sin and then replace Aurelia with, um, then replace Aurelia with Lee Sin. But I think maybe it would have been better just to play the, I think it maybe would have been better just to play Lee Sin regardless, even as a one-cost unit, because he'd have the possibility to kick out enemy champs. All right, right there we get a really clutch redemption that keeps Kale alive a little bit longer. She does ultimately get knocked out, but she's done quite a bit of damage. Most of the enemy team is low, and by the way, look at Swain. He just is living forever in these fights, getting off ult after ult after ult, and it makes sense that he can do this, because remember, Fabled comps are very low damage team compositions. They survive by being tanky, and oh, look at the Yone! Ah! Smurfing on this fight. I think he was on like 10 HP or something like that, but he's going to win the round. And I was like, wow, okay. Now I do have a two star Morg, but I'd have to drop down to Divine 3 to put him in. I put her in. And with me not really having much else there, I'm just going to keep rolling. I have passed some Nikos here. I'm fully aware of that, but Nico's just in there for the traits. So I narrowly won that last round, even with Kale getting pulled by Aatrox into a terrible position. So I'm thinking, yeah, I think maybe I've found the answer to this. I think maybe I found a way to manu uh, to navigate this fight. Swain lives forever, Yone lives forever, and as long as Kale's still alive, we're going to get this. Also, I do manage to get the Shroud off on the Nico in that la in this uh, fight here. If I win this, this is the last round of the game. If I lose this, there's one more round after this one, so I'm hoping I can win this. But we've actually managed to take out most of the enemy team. Yone has been super duper clutch in these fights, both for surviving so long and then also for... Um, being able to cut the armor and magic resistance of the enemy team. Another great redemption as Shen dies. Or actually, no, never mind. I guess that was... There's the redemption coming up there. But Kale goes down to almost death, and then she comes back to life once again. And looks like we've got this. So there we go. It's going to be a win against a team comp that it looked like I would certainly lose against. But uh, I think it was a pretty good adaptation there, recognizing what traits I needed to play in order to make this thing work. So there you go, an example of adapting to what the game gave me. Some really bad items, but I think that was countered by having the good fortune to hit, to high roll the Kale chosen on level 7. Anyway, I was very happy with this game. I hope you enjoyed watching this, and I was glad to share it with you on YouTube. So until next time, have a great week, and I'll see you guys again soon.